everyone. I'm Jesse Burst. I'm your host and moderator. Today I'm the founder and the chief analyst at Smart Grid News. That's the Internet's oldest, largest, and highest ranked smart grid site. And we're glad to bring you this important topic, uh, choosing uh, the right communications technology. You know, I've been covering this sector for the last decade, and of course we've been talking about communications that whole time. And I've just been struck by how much confusion and how much controversy there is over this topic. I'll get one friend who's a veteran of 30 years, an expert. He'll wave his arms around and claim that this is the only way to do it. And I'll have another friend, equally experienced, equally expert, and he'll tell me the exact opposite. And they're both equally sincere. They're both equally convinced. Uh, and so it's almost like uh, talking religion or, or politics or religion and politics combined. So today we're going to talk about the cellular side of the question, and we're going to try to apply a little science to it. Uh, but we're not just going to wave our arms around. We're going to do three things I think you're going to find is, is a very valuable help to you. The first is to talk a little bit about an approach to deciding. Again, to be a little more scientific, to act like engineers, to define our use cases, define our needs, figure out what that means in terms of the technical specifications, and then test the technologies to see which ones fit. Second, we're going to give you some test results. Now, these are tests that were conducted by Qualcomm. That's just one data point. But I think you're going to find it's very useful information for your collection. And third, we're going to talk about some lessons learned in real life from a utility that's just gone through this evaluation process. Now, your mileage may vary. Uh, you need to consider all sides. Certainly, you need to consider cellular as one of your options. And we're going to do that today. And you're going to learn a lot about it. So here's our agenda. Joseph Ho from Qualcomm is here. And he's going to talk about the study approach and some of the things they found and, and additional points about cellular. Uh, Brian Huey from Sprint is going to talk about the technology comparison. And the, both of them will talk about some of the advantages that cellular claims on its side. And then we're going to move to Matt Gilmore from Consumers Energy. And he's going to talk about the lessons they've learned as they've gone forward. We're going to wrap up. We're not going to have question and answer in between. We're going to wait till the end. And in fact, this time, we're going to stay a few minutes late for any of, the, of you that want to stay, you want to ask additional questions, want to hear what others are asking and the answers. We'll stay over our hour to, to accommodate you. Now, here's today's presenters and an important disclaimer. None of these companies speaks for the others, nor does their appearance uh, imply any endorsement of one way or another. They're here to give you their individual perspectives. I'm Jesse Burst again, your host uh, from Smart Grid News. Also joining us, Joseph Ho. He's the Director of Technical Marketing at Research and Development uh, Group in Qualcomm. Uh, Joseph, thanks for joining. Uh, hi, thank you. Brian Huey is here as well. Brian is uh, handles business development and strategy for the Smart Grid and Utilities Group at Sprint Nextel. Welcome, Brian. Hi, Jesse. Thank you, and pleasure to be here. And uh, also Matt Gilmore, who's the Director of Enterprise Architecture and Standards. He's with Consumers Energy. Matt, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to your colleagues today. Well, thank you, Jesse. I appreciate the opportunity. So let's get started. Uh, let me bring up Joseph Hope. He's a director of technical marketing at Qualcomm. He's got 15 years of experience in wireless and networking. He's been uh, involved in things like systems engineering and technical marketing at companies such as Nortel, Tel Labs, and Lockheed Martin before joining Qualcomm. He's got more than 10 patent applications, and he's got multiple degrees, including a PhD in, in specializing in, in wireless networking. So he knows whereof he speaks. Uh, Joseph, thanks for joining us, and over to you. So thank you, JC, for the introduction. Uh, and so we have performed a study to analyze the smart grid communication use cases. And we also evaluated the feasibility of some communications technologies. They include cellular, RF mesh, and PLC. And we try to look at their suitability for use in smart grid. So in this study, we have gone through three major steps. In the first step, we have collected smart grid communication use cases based on information from reputable sources. The network requirements are then derived from all these use cases. And then in the next step, uh, we evaluated potential smart grid communication technologies. 
And as I mentioned, we covered cellular RF mesh and PLC. We compared their technical capabilities and then we evaluated their cost of ownership. And as part of the study, we reviewed our results with utility companies and we have talked to companies in multiple geographical regions. And after that, we advised our results based on their feedback. So there is a question on like why we should use 3G LTE cellular for smart grid. So I have listed like seven of the reasons below and, and let me go through them one after another. First, high performance. Cellular technology is constantly evolving. Today, data rate in excess of two megabits per second and also latency in the 100 millisecond range can be achieved. And in terms of reliability, cellular networks support network redundancy. And many operators have also deployed backup batteries, backup power supply, and also transportable cell sites. And the objective is to make sure that they can offer uninterrupted services. And the availability of today's cellular system is at about 99%. And in terms of coverage, cellular networks are serving 98% of the U.S. population today. And coverage, if needed, can be extended by other solutions, for example, low-cost small cells. And in terms of security, cellular networks are not subject to meter-to-meter -meter hacking. And if needed, you can turn off individual meter one at a time without impacting network operation. On top of that, cellular network has built-in security features. And if needed, additional application layer securities can be added on the top in order to meet certain use case requirements. As for the cost of ownership, cellular has a large ecosystem including chip vendors, device developers, infrastructure vendors, and service providers. This will ensure that there will be low capex and opex uh, for the utilities. In terms of scalability, cellular can support millions of users today. It has been demonstrated through history that it can scale up to support the fast-growing traffic and user demands. And last but not least, uh, standard-based. Cellular is supported by global standards. Among all the benefits, this enables seamless interoperability. So this table shows a summary of some of the key characteristics of the smart grid use cases. We have looked into a number of use cases, including distribution automation, meter reading, firmware update, outage management, surface switch, direct low control, and also real-time pricing. And here we are focusing on four aspects of all these use cases. They are latency, the traffic arrival interval, device density, and reliability. So uh, without getting into all the details and all the numbers you have seen on the screen, uh, let me give you a high-level summary. Most use cases require message latencies in between 1 to 30 seconds. And for the case of distribution automation, it has more stringent requirements at about 1 second per message. And there are also non-real-time use cases, for example, multi-interval meter reading. Uh, and also firmware update. They can tolerate latency of four hours and up to seven days in the case of uh, firmware update. In terms of traffic arrival, the arrival rate of events ranges from several events per device per day in the case of meter reading. And, and it can be as low as two per device per year in the case of firmware update. The density of smart meter ranges from like 10 per square kilometer in the rural areas to up to 2,000 per square kilometer in the urban areas. There are on average 15 distribution network devices for every 1,000 smart meters. And uh, in the last row, in terms of reliability, as measured by the rate of successful message delivery, reliability requirement can be as low as 99.5% uh, for distribution automation, and it can be 98% for all other use cases. 
So based on the use cases that we just look at, I have summarized some of the key network requirements and they are listed in this table. In terms of data capacity, for smart meter, the, the data capacity requirement is at around 0.21 megabyte per hour per 1,000 population. And it is about 0.82 megabyte per hour per 1,000 population for distribution automation. And for message latency, in most cases, a latency of smaller than five seconds is needed. But in the case of distribution automation, the requirement is at about one second per message. As for coverage, in general, we need to have ubiquitous coverage in order to support all the installed base of smart meters and distribution devices. For reliability, we just discussed reliability as low as 99.5% is needed. And in terms of security requirement, the network should be able to support security mechanisms based on the NIST guideline and also guidelines from other uh, relevant agencies spectrum. It can support data rate up to one megabit per second and it has a message latency lower than one second.